it's time to customize your new Mac running Sequoia, or if you just updated to Mac OS 15, I'll show you how to find the settings that you may want to change, and reveal some hidden or unknown settings you may love. So let's get started. Some of the things we will be changing today are customizing the Finder window, including the Finder sidebar, the icons across the top. We'll be looking into the Finder settings. We'll customize the menu bar across the top and the icons here, including the control center. We'll be dealing with the notifications. Mac OS tips in general, we will go through some of my favorite settings that I like to change, and then we'll talk about new features in apps like Safari and other apps. Now let's customize the Finder and I'll show you where the hidden menu is. So click on the icon called Finder here on the dock. It'll open up the Finder window for you. And up here in this top gray area, if there's not enough room, you can stretch this out to, to have gray area. Right click and you get this new menu. You can also use a two finger tap on your trackpad to get this. And let's click on Customize Toolbar. Here's some of the things I like to do and you choose what seems best for you. First, I change this to Icon and Text. I remove Group and Action and Share. What I like is Get Info. I can highlight a file, click Get Info, it'll tell me all the properties and size and type. So that's, it. that's useful for me. The next thing I like is Quick Look. So if there's any document, I can do a quick look on that document without opening the real app for it, and it'll show me what it is, and that's easy to go through many files or photos, quickly see what the contents are without having to open them all the way. So that's great for me. I also like to highlight a file and then click the trash can, and I'll take out a space right there. Click Done. The next thing I do is I go to View, and I like to turn on the Show Status Bar. Gives me this bar down here, shows me how many items, gives me this little slider so that I can see different size icons. The next thing, I go to Finder Settings right here, and then I click on New Finder Window Shows Recent, and a lot of times I like to choose my home folder, so when I open this Finder Window, it goes to my home folder. Here's an example. And there's my home folder. Back to Settings. Let's customize the sidebar. I turn on my home folder. There's a little house right here next to your home folder name is. Click that. Right now I'm not using iCloud Drive, so I want to hide that to so turn off cloud storage. And in my work environment, I do not want Bonjour Computer showing up. Okay. Now moving on to the menu bar in the control center, and we're going to customize this area. You may also notice that I have the sound control icon here that gives me the ability to quickly change the volume or change my output source. I also have here the battery percentage showing. I'll show you how to do that. So let's go over to the Apple menu and click on System Settings. Now in the System Settings, we'll go down on the left side to the Control Center. You may need to change yours to always show in menu bar. It may be set by the default to show in active, but I like mine to always stay on. Going down a little lower, you'll see I've turned on the battery percentage. You can toggle that on or off. Some other things that I like to do is look through, see what I can change. I'll take off the day of the week so I can fit more icons on there later. But the tip that I'd like everyone to see is turning on the accessibility option right here, Show and Control Center. Now, that gives us this little icon here. When I click on that, I can quickly go in here and I use this key the most. It's called Zoom. Click on Zoom. Now, when I hold down the Option and Command button and then click the Plus button, I can zoom in, hit the Minus button, it can zoom out. This is really great for presentations when you want to highlight a certain area of your screen. And so that's what, a quick way to turn zoom on and off. Now I turn it back off. Let's move on to the dock and the desktop. Now here is where you can change what happens when you click on the desktop. In the latest OS, when you click on the desktop, everything moves out of the way. You click it, it comes back. If that really bothers you, you can come here in the settings to desktop and dock, click on this and then change this to say only in stage manager. 
You can also do things with your dock, change the size bigger, smaller here. Now let me show you some of those same options to change the dock down here on the dock. You'll notice there's a line. If you click and hold that line with your cursor, drag up or down to change the size. Now if there's an icon you don't want here, you can click and drag it up off of the dock, let go, and then it'll disappear. Or you can do a two finger tap or a right click with your mouse. The menu pops up, choose remove from the dock. Now we need to add things to the dock. How do we do that? I'll click on the finder window, go to applications, scroll down, find TV, I want to bring that icon back, grab it, drag it down, wait for a spot to move, let go, and I, I can put the most often used apps down here on the dock so that I can quickly launch them when I need to. Okay, back to settings. Let's go to appearance. There are scroll bars, but they disappear, and if you want the scroll bars to always be there, you can see here they disappear, but when you start scrolling they appear. I like to always have them, so here in appearance, I'll change this to always. Now I have the scroll bar always showing here, always showing here and in all my other apps. But let's go down to lock settings. So this is where they put the sleep settings and the power settings and all those kind of things. And let me change to some of my favorites. Start the screensaver in. 20 minutes. Turn off the display. Two minutes is a little too short for me. I'll change that to five minutes when I'm on battery. When I'm on the power adapter though, I want that to stay on for presentations and other things I'm doing for a longer time. So I will put an hour for that one. Now, after the screensaver turns on, I want my password to come up, but not five seconds after. So I'll change that to one minute after the screensaver starts, then it will require my password. So if the screensaver comes on, I can quickly wake it back up and it won't require my password. Okay, moving down a little farther. If you don't have a mouse plugged in, this won't show, but I do have a mouse plugged in and I need to change from natural scrolling and I turn that off because the way I prefer to scroll with my mouse is this way. Now if it seems normal for you, you just need to toggle it back and forth till, until it's the way you want. Same is true with the trackpad. If you have a laptop, you'll need to come to the trackpad section, go to scroll and zoom, and then you'll need to turn on or off the scrolling and then test it by putting two fingers on your trackpad and moving both fingers up and down and then you can see if it's the way that you want it. Now let's move on to some of the new features in Sequoia. One thing I like is the new windows tiling. So if you have some windows that are open and it's covering your screen and you can't find what you need to and everything's in the way, click and hover over the green dot. So one choice you can choose is quarters. That moves everything to a quarter so you can find it. Then you can hover again and click and hold, and of course you can go to full screen. So now that we're in Safari, let's look at what Safari can do. Right here is a special icon. If you click it, you can turn on summaries. It uses an AI to summarize articles for you. So let me turn that on. Now I want to click on Show Reader. The reader is a really nice way to read articles without all the graphics and advertisements that are very distracting. So let's hide the reader. And we'll go back and choose quarters to get everything back where we want. So that is an introduction to Windows tiling in Mac OS. Okay, let's move on to the next new great thing in Mac OS Sequoia, and that is iPhone mirroring. So I'll go ahead and open up the iPhone mirroring app, go through the continue to set up. I need to unlock my phone. I type in the passcode on my phone to unlock it. Allow my notifications. Click get started. Type in my computer password. 
Now my phone is unlocked, I need to relock my phone. And you can choose Ask Every Time or Authenticate Automatically. I'll choose Automatically. Put in my computer password one more time. And now I can see my phone on my Mac. This is a great option if you need to show something as a mobile app to someone or you want to not have to reach into your pocket to get your iPhone out. Click on an app with your mouse and then you can go ahead and play it. I'm very proud of you. You've done, you've done. Okay, that, that was the podcast app. This is the Freeform app. Come in here, use the Freeform. Click down here. And all my notifications from my phone take over. So use your imagination and come up with good reasons to use your iPhone on your Mac to help you to be more productive. Okay, let's disconnect iPhone mirroring. Another great new app that was introduced with Sequoia is Passwords. So if you do a quick search on the internet, this is some of the results I got from an AI. Use a password manager and use unique passwords. That is very important that you do not reuse the same password on multiple websites. And the only way that you can really do that is to use a passwords manager. And now we have one built in called Passwords right here in the apps folder. Double click that, type in your computer password or put in your fingerprint and the password manager is here. You can manage all of your passwords and keep a unique password for all of the different sites that you go to and all of your accounts. You can securely share passwords with family members through this. Great way to strengthen your security because if a website gets hacked and you are reusing that password, then you are vulnerable in all the other places that password has been used. So use a password manager like this one in Mac West Sequoia. Now a quick look at notifications. One thing you want to avoid is having them distract you or be popping up during presentation or some other thing that's going on. So you can use the control center to help you with that. You'll come down to the focus and you, of course, you can turn the focus on or off, but sometimes you want it to be scheduled. So you can come in to the focus settings. And of course, you can add a focus. So let's add one for work time. So we'll click on work. And then we'll add a schedule. On the schedule, let's do weekdays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Click done. Now, during those hours, it will be focused and you will not get pop-ups or notifications during that time, so that won't distract you and you can only get notifications before or after that time. And let's go to the last tip of the day. You can click here on Spotlight and then type in Tips. Spotlight will find the built-in Tips app. Double-click on that and you can come and get lots of tips from Mac West Sequoia. It will take you through all kinds of new things that you're not familiar with. So as time goes by and you need to come back, it can show you all kinds of great things to help you be more effective on your Mac. And that concludes our video for today. Thanks for watching.